Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we will look at five examples of using conditional formatting with dates. So let's do this. So in this first example let's look at creating a conditional formatting rule to highlight the dates that have expired. So I have this list of names and expiry dates. I want to identify the ones in the past by changing their color or any other conditional formatting uh, kind of color or format you can think of. So let me start by selecting those dates and going into conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, and we're going to choose less than. I want to know if any of those dates that I have highlighted are less than and it will prompt me for a date but I'm not going to type in a date I'm going to type the today function so equals today an opening bracket and a closing bracket I'm going to emphasize that on the screen in a moment for now I'm just going to choose some format that I would like to apply so let me just go for a nice uh, orange fill colour. Let's have some bold white font. And as I come out of here, I can now see the two dates that are in the past. This video has been created on the 7th of March. Just so we're aware of that, it is the 7th of March 2018. So those are the two dates in the past. Uh, this is the formula that I put in that box. If you're not familiar with it or you couldn't see that it is the today function equals today open bracket close bracket and we have identified expired dates now with conditional formatting in Excel there is no limit to how many conditional formatting rules you can put on a cell you're limited to one icon set or one uh, data bar and stuff like this but you can in theory have as many rules as you want although there is a limit to how many you would want so let's look at putting one more on here I know that those dates have expired let's find out which dates will expire within the next four weeks and this is the formula we're going to use for that I'm going to need the today function again but we're going to put plus 28 after it so 28 being 28 days aka four weeks that's what we're going to use as a kind of notice period that these dates are going to be overdue soon they're going to be expiring soon I might as well take a copy of that as I've taken the effort to type it in there and then I'll highlight my cells I wish to apply the formatting to conditional formatting highlight cells rules between now what I just copied I'm going to be pasting in the second box here in the first box we are going to simply have the today function equals today open bracket close bracket and equals today open bracket close bracket plus 28 I then can choose some formatting again let's go for a blue this time and when I click OK to each of these there are another two dates remember this is the 7th of March I'm recording this on 2018 there are two dates in this list that will expire within the next 28 days or four weeks in the previous example we looked at how to um, identify any date that will expire in the next 28 days or four weeks. Now let's imagine you only wanted working days. Now we can use a function called workday for this. So let me demonstrate that on screen first of all. This is the workday function. It will prompt me, you see there's an international version where it can be flexible with weekends whereas this first one assumes weekends, Saturday, Sundays, 
are non-working days. The second one, you'd be able to turn that off or change it. Going with this first one for this example, the start date will be today's date, whatever that is. And then the number of days, if I put a positive number in, like 10, that means within the next 10 working days from today's date. Now, I have one more argument there for holidays. So you can actually write down a list of kind of non-working days uh, on a sheet somewhere. And you can reference that in this question here. Just reference those bunch of dates and they will be treated as non-working and excluded as well. Now, I'm not going to worry about that in this example, keeping it a bit brief. Just going to do a typical 10 working days, so 10 Monday to Fridays, essentially with this function. Let me take a copy of that formula and highlight the dates into conditional formatting and between. So just like the previous example here, I'm going to put the today function in the first box equals today open bracket close bracket and then paste what I just wrote on screen into the second box. So equals work day. The start date is the today function comma 10. You can put negative numbers there as well to work in the past. I've got a positive 10, 10 working days in the future. Let's pick a color. Let's go for a green. Let's try and mix up the colors I'm using. And as I come out of here, it's those same two dates from previous. They also occur within the next 10 working days. So that is that done. We can deal with working days in addition to just general days. OK, so maybe we want to format a date if it occurs on a specific weekday. So in this example, let me highlight the dates that happen on a Sunday. Maybe that is important, that may be critical for what we do. We want to visualize the Sundays in a list. Now for this one, we can use a function called weekday. And what this function does is it will return a number which identifies the day of the week. It's going to ask for a serial number. So if I just select a date for now, and then put in my comma, and then the return type. And you see it lists a bunch of numbers and tells you what that uh, uh, corresponds to. So I'm going to use number two, which means Monday is a number one through to seven, which is a Sunday. So I will know that if the number comes back with a seven, that would indicate a Sunday. So I'm going to choose selection two, whereby Sunday would be a seven. And I'll need to know that because I'm going to test that. So let me write that in here now. So I've got my first date of the list ready for a highlight. Return type is two, close bracket, equals seven. Is the result of that formula seven? I'll take a copy of that. Let's highlight the range I want to format. So the cell I used in that formula is the first cell of the highlighted range. Yes, C2 right now. Conditional formatting. This time I'm going for new rule. And in here, use a formula to determine the cells. And I will paste that formula into the box provided. Equals weekday C2, comma 2, equals 7. Let me do some formatting. What color this time? Uh, yellow, I guess. Let's go for a yellow. Let's come out of here. And we have two. I have the 18th of March and the 10th of June 2018. Both of those occur on a Sunday. Let me just quickly write that formula we use there again into the box next door to these dates. Whoops, comma two. And if I copy that down, you can see what I meant. See, they both come back with a seven. So I had the logical test in there. If that equals seven, that is a Sunday. Okay, so we can highlight specific days of the week in a list.
Okay, we have come to the fifth and final example for this video. We now want to highlight the dates that occur on a specific month. So I'm not interested in what the day is or what the year is. Just if it happens in a specific month, that is of interest to us. So for this one, we're going to use the month function. So we have a day function, we have a year function that can be used in the same way they would extract either the day, year, or in my case right now, month from a date, and we can then test it. So if I did the month function and selected the date, close bracket, and test if it's equal to three, uh, then I will be identifying any dates that occur within March. Uh, so quite a small list here, it's quite easy to see, there's three that occur in March, but depending on how those dates are formatted, or how big the list is, or what criteria you're using here, if you're just trying to identify the current month, um, or if it's selected from a combo box, or something a bit more flash like that, then it would take it to another level, it's a, it's a good example for now. So let's copy that formula. And highlight the dates. Conditional formatting. It's new rule and formula again. Pasting it in. And let's choose some kind of colour. Back to blue, I think. And there are the three that we already knew was going to happen. Um, but it kind of proves the formatting works. That is our fifth and final example. Being able to extract information from a date like the day, the year, or in this case the month, and put that into some criteria and some logical test as well. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope you found it useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel. And if you're interested in learning a bit more about the formulas of Excel, if some of these in this video were a little bit new to you, then check out our Excel Formulas Made Easy course there is a link in the description of this video uh, to take you straight to it. Enroll in that and we'll be learning formulas in just a few hours. You will be an Excel formula master.